welcome to Arcanum and Lore, Episode 6, Chasing Humanity. This episode features creative works by Dylan Thomas, Tom Woodruff, Charles Darnell, Percy Shelley, John Dunn, Alexander Pushkin, Spartacus Anagnosterus, George Orwell, and Jeff Pettigrew. I'd like to take a moment to thank all our contributors and listeners. This episode presented challenges as is so often the case when tackling a subject like the human race. Fear not, the poets are here. This is Arcanum and Lore, Episode 6, Chasing Humanity. Fern Hill by Dylan Thomas Now as I was young and easy under the apple boughs, about the lilting house and happy as the grass was green, Honored among wagons, I was prince of the apple towns, and once below a time I lordly had the trees and leaves trail with daisies and barley down the rivers of the windfall light. And as I was green and carefree, famous among the barns, about the happy yard and singing as the farm was home, in the sun that is young once only, Time let me play and be, golden in the mercy of his means. And green and golden I was huntsman and herdsman. The calves sang to my horn, the foxes on the hills barked clear and cold, and the Sabbath rang slowly in the pebbles of the holy streams. All the sun long it was running, it was lovely, the hay fields high as the house, the tunes from the chimneys it was air, and playing, lovely and watery, and fire green as grass and nightly under the simple stars, as I rode to sleep the owls were bearing the farm away. All the moon long I heard, blessed among stables, the night jars flying with the ricks and the horses flashing into the dark. And then to awake and the farm, like a wanderer white, with the dew come back, the cock on his shoulder, it was all shining. It was Adam and Maiden. The sky gathered again, and the sun grew round that very day. So it must have been after the birth of the simple light. In the first spinning place, the spell-browned horses walking warm, out of the whinnying green stable, on to the fields of praise and honored among foxes and pheasants by the gay house under the new-made clouds, and happy as the heart was long, in the sun borne over and over. I ran my heedless ways, my wishes raced through the house-high hay, and nothing I cared at my sky-blue trades that time allows. In all his tuneful turning, so few and such morning songs, before the children green and golden follow him out of grace. Nothing I cared in the lamb-white days that time would take me, up to the swallow-thronged loft by the shadow of my hand, in the moon that is always rising, nor that riding to sleep I should hear him fly with the high fields and wake to the farm forever fled from the childless land, Oh, as I was young and easy in the mercy of his means, time held me green and dying, though I sang in my chains like the sea. We are one facet of group soul by Tom Woodruff. One cell of group mind, one pebble in the stone soup, standards like currencies change, always a tith commission. Someone always rings the resonance bell, quoting elders who cannot be there to contradict our version of events. Though a drama filter this oscillates between, comedy of errors, farce to tragedy. I saw a play file away about a man who filed his life away. In order to control, of course, he forgot where he misplaced his life slash files. I lived my life by Beatles songs, help, we can work it out. I drank the coca Killa. I ate the glowing burger, sugar, salt, addicted. I saw the movies, I listened to news, I heard the podcasts. We are of now, and it came from when, then, zen. Through the filter of art, romantic, surrealistic, chaotic, street, autobiographical, mystery, psychic, spirit, art. 
I go to great cathedrals for the murals and the light through stained glass ceilings. I go to art for consolation, connection, communication. I go to town for shopping. Live second hand. My first hand is busy clapping. If a forest falls, will the hundredth monkey butterfly effect save the Amazon? Air and Angels by John Donne Twice or thrice had I loved thee Before I knew thy face or name. So in a voice, so in a shapeless flame, Angels affect us oft and worshipped be. Still when to where thou wert I came, Some lovely glorious nothing I did see. But since my soul, whose child love is, Takes limbs of flesh and else could nothing do, More subtle than the parent is, Love must not be. But take a body too, and therefore what thou wert and who, I bid love ask, and now, That it assume thy body I allow, And fix itself to thy lip, eye, and brow. Whilst thus to ballast love I thought, And so more steadily to have gone, With wares which would sink admiration, I saw I had love's pinnacle overfraught. Every thy hair for love to work upon Is much too much, some fitter must be sought. For nor in nothing, nor in things, Extreme and scattering bright, Can love inhere, Then as an angel face and wings of air, not pure as it yet pure doth wear. So thy love may be my love's sphere. Just such disparity as is twixt air and angel's purity, twixt women's love and men's will ever be. And nothing goes. And nothing goes, said the hare to the tree, bet you can't jump over that there creek. Same was said every gosh darn week, he smiled and went, refusing to speak. He'll never learn that hare's a freak, the tree bellowed and it scared the meek. The days grew long, it was plain to see, time passing fast as time can be. And nothing goes, said the hare to the tree, same as before over that there creek. Not so fast, said the tree with glee, I've jumped over or can't you see. The truth be told, the root was free, it stunned the hare at what it might be. And nothing goes, said the hare to the tree, lost the bed and gained a creek. Fantastic quote by John Steinbeck. I believe that there is one story in the world, and only one. Humans are caught in their lives, in their thoughts, in their hungers and ambitions, in their avarice and cruelty, and in their kindness and generosity too, in a net of good and evil. There is no other story. A man, after he has brushed off the dust and chips of his life, will have left only the hard, clean questions. Was it good or was it evil? Have I done well or ill? Yahoo, Buckaroo by Charles Darnell Yahoo, Buckaroo, your bare butt bouncing to the clop of your cowboy boots, six guns high in the air. Where's your pants, boy? But you hear the laugh behind gruff words and grin madly running back down the hall. I jump up to catch you, but you've already peeled out the driveway, one hand on the wheel, the other waving crazily, off on a hot one tonight. You get back late, loosening that tie to plop yourself on the couch, only to feel the weight of your own buckaroo jumping right on your belly, with a wild giggle and your breath is almost gone. But before old death walks off with it, you reach out with your six-gun and yell, Yahoo, buckaroo, and give him one right between the eyes. Remembrance by Alexander Pushkin When noisy day no more assails the ears of men, And on the silent city slowly, Night's pallid shadow falls, 
while after toil again the wage of sleep repays them wholly. Then in the hush of my hours drag out their dismal course, no peace my weary vigils bring me. But through the listless night the serpents of remorse, with piercing fangs more shrewdly sting me, obsessed by seething dreams the overburdened soul can neither bear its pain nor cure it. In silence memory unwinds her lengthy scroll before me, and I must endure it. And loathing it, I read the record of the years. I curse and tremble like one baited. For all my bitter groans, for all my bitter tears, the lines are not obliterated. The Scream of a Little Face by Spartacus and Agnostorus This unknown world stays always the same for the innocent. Their questions stay incomplete, without question marks, to end the grief of their voice. This world makes people feel more and more older than they should be with its dark moments. This world makes the words forget their silence in blood-red roses left for the beloved ones that need to hide themselves in photos. Each New Year's story is lost in tears and promises of grand designs of people like Tartuffe, who forget the orphans. How many times a scream will be heard until an expressionless artist decides that silence in paintings is worth thousands words of daily killings of joy? Is it so difficult to find a storyteller waiting patiently for the kids to go to their beds instead of casting a shadow upon the tyranny of spent bullet shells? Beasts of England by George Orwell Beasts of England, beasts of Ireland, beasts of every land and clime, hearken to the joyful tidings of the golden future time. Soon or late the day is coming, tyrant man shall be overthrown and the fruitful fields of England shall be trod by beasts alone. Rings shall vanish from our noses, and the harness from our back. Bit and spur shall rust forever, cruel whips no more shall crack. Riches more than mind can picture, wheat and barley, oats and hay, clover, beans and mangle, wurzels, shall be ours upon that day. Bright will shine the fields of England, purer shall its waters be. Sweeter yet shall blow its breezes on the day that sets us free. For that day we all must labor, though we die before it break. Cows and horses, geese and turkeys, all must toil for freedom's sake. Beasts of England, beasts of Ireland, beasts of every land and clime, Hearken well and spread my tidings of the golden future time. I Mourn I Will Not Be by Charles Darnell I mourn I will not be one who feels the warmth of other suns, who treads the dirt of other earths, and breathes the air of alien worlds. No, I was born too soon, tied to this spinning rock, pushed and shoved by so many. Oh, how I long for space, here and in the blackness above. The pinprick of stars beckons like sirens, but I am Odysseus, fixed to this corner of darkened sky. It will be for others, long in the misty years ahead, pioneers who trek fantastic landscapes and sail strange seas, who build their homes and cities, cradled in the arms of unnamed mounts. My Fallen Angel The tears of heaven rain down on me, poisoning my soul with the thirst to be alive, my fallen angel. You come to me in the dead of night with sacred thoughts of our long-lost love, my fallen angel. Are you the woman I saw you to be, or are you the girl I knew those years before, my fallen angel? The pictures by the fire, old and worn, faded from the flames that hold our love eternal, my fallen angel. 
They are all that remain, the children have grown and gone, leaving me alone in this archaic house, my fallen angel. I spend the days writing letters to you for which I cannot send and can expect no reply, my fallen angel. The music echoes through the halls, thundering at the rotting lumber, as well as its rotting occupant, pounding away at the memories, my fallen angel. The years pass, and little more than a whisper is spoken in this house, but the pictures always tell me stories, my fallen angel. I write you letters less and less now. I have begun to forget the little things, my fallen angel. I have become so old that I no longer recall the year, and search the house for endless hours looking for something that is not there, my fallen angel. I curse my mind and shall welcome death when it comes. Pray forgiveness, as I can no longer remember your name. I shall therefore call you my fallen angel. War by Percy Shelley Ambition, power, and avarice now have hurled death, fate, and ruin on a bleeding world. See on yon heath what countless victims lie. Hark what loud shrieks ascend through yonder sky. Tell then the cause, tis sure the avenger's rage, has swept these myriads from life's crowded stage. Hark to that groan and anguished hero dies. He shudders in death's latest agonies. Yet does a fleeting hectic flush his cheek, Yet does his parting breath essay to speak, O God, my wife, my children, monarch thou, For whose support this fainting frame lies low, For whose support in distant lands I bleed, Let his friend's welfare be the warrior's meed. He hears me not, ah, no kings cannot hear, For passion's voice has dulled their listless ear. To thee, then, mighty God, I lift my moan. Thou wilt not scorn a suppliant's anguished groan. Oh, now I die, but still is death's fierce pain. God hears my prayer. We meet, we meet again. He spake, reclined him on death's bloody bed, and with a parting groan his spirit fled. Oppressors of mankind, to you we owe the baleful streams from whence these miseries flow. For you how many a mother weeps her son, snatched from life's course ere half his race was run. For you how many a widow drops a tear in silent anguish on her husband's bier. Is it then thine almighty power, she cries, whence tears of endless sorrow dim these eyes? Is this the system which thy powerful sway, which else in shapeless chaos sleeping lay, formed and approved? It cannot be, but, oh, forgive me, heaven, my brain is warped by woe. Tis not, he never bade the war note swell. He never triumphed in the work of hell. Monarchs of earth, thine is the baleful deed. Thine are the crimes from which thy subjects bleed. Ah, when will come the sacred fated time, When man unsullied by his leader's crime, Despising wealth, ambition, pomp, and pride, Will stretch him fearless by his foe men's side? Ah, when will come the time when o'er the plain No more shall death and desolation reign? When will the sun smile on the bloodless field, And the stern warrior's arm the sickle wield? Not whilst some king in cold ambition's dreams Plans for the field of death his plotting schemes, Not whilst for private peak the public fall, And one frail mortal's mandate governs all, Swelled with command and mad with dizzying sway, who sees unmoved his myriads fade away, careless who lives or dies, so that he gains some trivial point for which he took the pains. What then are kings? I see the trembling crowd. I see their fulsome clamors echoed loud. Their stern oppressor pleased appears awhile, but April's sunshine is a monarch's smile. 
Kings are but dust. The last eventful day will level all and make them lose their sway. We'll dash the scepter from the monarch's hand and from the warrior's grasp rest the ensanguined brand. O oh, peace, soft peace, art thou forever gone? Is thy fair form indeed forever flown? And love and concord hast thou swept away as if incongruous with thy parted sway. Alas, I fear thou hast, for none appear. Now o'er the palsied earth stalks giant fear, with war and woe and terror in his train. Listening, he pauses on the embattled plain, then speeding swiftly o'er the ensanguined heath, he left the frightful work to hell and death. See, gory ruin yokes his blood-stained car. He scents the battle's carnage from afar. Hell and destruction mark his mad career. He tracks the rapid step of hurrying fear. Whilst ruined towns and smoking cities tell that thy work, monarch, is the work of hell. It is thy work, I hear a voice repeat, shakes the broad basis of thy blood-stained seat. And at the orphan's sigh, the widow's moan totters the fabric of thy guilt-stained throne. It is thy work, O monarch, now the sound fainter and fainter, yet is borne around. Yet to enthusiast ears the murmurs tell that heaven, indignant at the work of hell, will soon the cause, the hated cause, will remove, which tears from earth peace, innocence, and love. Original Lives by Tom Woodruff Begin when the authentic experience does not need to be repeated. Of course, hunting turns to shopping, bathing turns to showers, sleep turns to dreaming, and we repeat rituals out of necessity. But there were times when all we had was original experiences, when no records were kept that can be now consulted, languages lost, questions unanswered. How were the pyramids built? What are the songs of solstice at Stonehenge? What is the music of the spheres? Are pyramids auric temples? Our times are full of repetition, repetition. Songs from long ago become music. We live in the adolescence of half a century ago, aware of every hook, line, riff, thus karaoke. We replicate old sounds of bands long disbanded, make Beatles songs with no Beatles. Ask where is Brian Jones? Our life is a mashup in the mix. We can even replay ancient instruments. Sounds exist like the bones of mammoths. All we lack is context. So we seek, go far back into past sounds to culturally appropriate. Add to the mix. The past is coming through. Boats of Immigrants by Spartacus and Agnostorus An illuminated view, small wooden boats with burnt matches, crossing the dark Mediterranean water to arrive at Lampedusa. Hearts full of hopes and injustice wars of mice, trusting Charon, the ferryman, to carry their own small wooden crosses. Wars of power, struggles, ruled by greedy visions of blind creators displaying smart ideas for betrayed souls. Lost souls not lost in history books of ceasefire and battles of human life. Looking again, the humorous painting of Louis Leopold Bolli, denounced for offending public morals. Before offering his tragic apology about his painting, Christ on the Cross. An attached piece of paper in his painting with his name and address, and a sculpted ivory figure of Jesus on a wooden cross looking far away. I am wondering after so many years if the Creator wanted Jesus to look his viewers, or remind them what they are looking, the wrong answer.
genre-esque. There was a man who got stuck in the elevator on his way home from work. The coffee got cold quickly, so did his temper. It was almost nine by the time he got home, cold beer and condiments in his icebox. The mellow jazz on the horn reminded him of the cafe in Havana. Had it been that long? He could feel it. The confrontation of alcohol and mind weighed heavy on reason. Would things be this perfect if the elevator had worked? Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night by Dylan Thomas Do not go gentle into that good night. Old age should burn and rave at close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Though wise men at their end no dark is right, because their words had forked no lightning they, do not go gentle into that good night. Good men, the last wave by, crying how bright, their frail deeds might have danced in a green bay, rage, rage against the dying of the light. Wild men who caught and sang the sun in flight, and learned too late they grieved it on its way, do not go gentle into that good night. Grave men near death, who see with blinding sight, blind eyes could blaze like meteors and be gay, rage, rage against the dying of the light. And you, my father, there on the sad height, curse, bless me now, with your fierce tears I pray, do not go gentle into that good night, rage, rage against the dying of the light. Thank you for joining us. This episode featured creative works by Dylan Thomas, Tom Woodruff, Charles Darnell, Percy Shelley, John Dunn, Alexander Pushkin, Spartacus Anagnosterus, George Orwell, and Jeff Pettigrew. Until next time, thank you very much for listening.